Have you developed an odd taste or smell you just can't seem to shake? Well, you're not alone. I started having these symptoms myself a few weeks back. Google searches mostly pointed to dental problems, which I didn't have. Then my doctor told me something shocking. I was experiencing something he's seeing in his patients about once a week. And get this, it was related to the COVID I thought I'd recovered from three months ago. A majority of people that get COVID-19 will lose at least some of their sense of smell. As COVID-19 continues to wreak havoc on our lives, we're continuing to learn more about its lingering impacts. Some people will get their recovery very quickly. Um, some people, it, it's much more slow. Justin Turner is the director of the Taste and Smell Clinic at Vanderbilt University Medical Center. He says although most will recover within six to eight weeks, side effects can hit you down the line, even if you thought you were in the clear. But there are a subgroup of individuals that will continue to have smell dysfunction going forward. And I would say a pretty good proportion of those, probably about 20 to 25 percent, are experiencing either uh, phantosmia or probably more commonly um, uh, uh, parosmias. From laundry detergent to trash to raw meat, people across the world are experiencing odd tastes and smells they just can't seem to shake. In phantosmia, you're typically smelling something that isn't there, whereas, uh, for example, parosmia, which is another type of dysosmia, you're smelling something like a flower and it smells like something very different. With now more than 30 million documented COVID-19 cases in the U.S., the condition, although a small percentage, will potentially affect millions of people. Here's what happens. The cause of smell loss is, at least in COVID-19, is thought to be that the virus itself is toxic to some of the supporting cells that uh, pro provide nutrition and support to the actual olfactory neurons that transmit um, uh, signals from odorants into the brain. According to Dr. Turner, when those neurons are damaged, they're not able to transmit our smell senses to the brain. But fortunately, there's this layer of what are called basal cells that can regenerate over time into new functioning olfactory neurons. The repair and regeneration process could take months. And once your senses do come back, they may not be perfect. And when they regenerate, they don't make their connections automatically. It's, um, it takes a little bit of it to kind of find their way to the right places in the brain. And often that is what is causing some of these dysosmias. It's just you're getting the signals, the signals are being sent, but it's not necessarily going to the right place. Picture your senses carrying a message to your brain, telling it to sense a smell. But the smell it tells your brain might actually be different from what you're really experiencing, like delivering the right signal, but to the wrong door. But unfortunately, this taste and smell damage will be permanent for some. If you don't have it back within a year, Dr. Turner says further recovery is unlikely. I think this is going to, you know, it's a little bit of a public health issue, I think, going forward just because of those numbers. And we know that a certain subset of these individuals are probably going to have permanent smell loss um, that are going to need to, you know, take, take precautions in the future with sort of protecting themselves from, you know, smoke and gas fumes and spoiled foods and things like that that, are, that they can't smell anymore. There's no known cure for phantasmia, but researchers are currently studying essential oil therapies. Even though there's not yet a consensus from the scientific community, Dr. Turner says the oils are showing promise and it is a tool Vanderbilt's using in its clinics. You can find lots of these smell training kits online, which usually is a combination of several different oils to help re-stimulate the growth of your senses. Nikki McGee, News 2.